You are now rocking with the best thoughts of the week. Let's go. All right, so today's show, what I'm going to be uh, going through is some quotes. <clears throat> Some quotes I think are very profound might help some of you guys and girls, ladies and gents. And um, I got a special guest with me today. It's gonna help me out with these quotes. We're gonna kind of go through them, read them one at a time, maybe discuss them a little bit, and then go on to the next one. So it's my hopes that this, uh, these quotes and Little phrases we talk about here will help some of you guys out. And you get the you get to hear it from a masculine energy and the feminine energy. And uh, we're just gonna do it like that. So my guest. Tell everybody your name cloud there. Hello everyone. My name is Joe Lane Harper. And recently left the school system here where I live to start a new career, trying to work from home, mother of one, just a great girl to be around. All right, a great girl to be around. That's what's up. <laughs> so uh, are you on any social media? Can people reach you? Do you... Have anything you do on the side? You know, people might want to contact you. Might be interested in your work. So tell them about it. Well, I do teach cheering and dance here in my local city. My name is Jolaine Harper on Facebook, on Instagram, Jolaine Harper. Don't try to hide away from my name and create all those new fly names. I'm just. Jolene Harper, J O L A Y N E H A R P E R. All right, cool, cool. So, this show is brought to you today by How To University. So, you guys go to howtouniversity.thinkific.com. There is a new course on the way, uh, it will be open for everyone to take. I say around August 16th. All right. It's called How to Start a Podcast Real Easy. In case you guys want to know how to start your own podcast, because you might be under the illusion that you got to have all this super expensive equipment, these mic stands and laptops and these mixer boards in order to do a podcast. But the case. The facts are that you don't need all of that. I guarantee you, most of you guys and girls have the equipment you already need already with you. So, if you want to learn how to start a podcast, you guys might have been thinking about doing that. Be sure to go to howtouniversity.thinkific.com and you can take the course online. All right, It'll be available, it'll be open for everyone to take. Um, August 16th all right if you guys are interested in just downloading the course like to your phone your laptop desktop your tablet you can go to payhip.com slash how to university all right that's p a y h i p dot com slash how to university that's that's the download the courses that's a download the download course site for how to university now if you just want to take it online and either way you do it you could take it at your own pace at your own time you can download it and then you could take it whenever you get ready after you download it to one of your devices or you can enroll online and then whenever you get ready you can always sign back in take take whatever part of the course you need to take and when you're done for that particular time frame or day 
You can come back another time. You can take it as long as you want. All right. So it's not a rush thing that you got to take the course and rush your way through it. Either way works. Downloading it to your phone, laptop, tablet, desktop, or you can go online and just take the course there. So you have both ways of doing it and you can do it at your own pace. All right. So that's how to university. So let's get to it. And um, these incredible quotes and we're going to go through it. Let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine. 14, 15, about 20 different quotes and sayings that um, let's just pick and choose to get you started. Well, we're going to go through all 20 of them. Now, if you, now if you have to go at some point, then you can go, but we can pick and choose which one you can pick which one. Okay. But I want to go through all 20 of them. Like I said, now, if you have to go at some point, just let me know. And um, I'll just finish it off. So, you want to start first? Sure, I will start first. The more you know, the more you will not go broke or be broke. All right. So, you tell us what that sounds like to you, what you think about the quote. Well, that, that is, that is kind of self-explanatory, the more you know. You know, a Dr. Seuss saying is, the more you know, more places you will go, the more you read, the more places you will go. So, I mean, it's true. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. The more you know, the higher you, the higher you do go. And ways you can make money. You don't have to work for people. You just learn as you grow. So that's kind of self-explanatory. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let me see. Yeah. The way. That's probably the way I look at it. The way I kind of see it. To go to kind of um, add to it. Or to piggyback off what you said. <laughs> We got this dog here in the background, this little uh, little baby guard dog. But um, pretty much, yeah, the more things you learn, whether it's and then that's another. Let me let me say something about learning in itself. A lot of people think that just going to a school, a traditional school, whether it's public school, elementary, um middle school, high school, college. People think that's the only way to learn something or only places you can go to learn. But the facts are, the truth is, all the matter, you can learn from anything and anywhere. And a lot of people don't believe that because they've pretty much been programmed to think just this is the only way to go. You got to go to school, go to college, get a job, and then that's your life. And that's the only place you can learn. But you can learn from books. You can learn from videos. You can learn through um, people. Just you stand in front of a group and you sitting down and talking or standing up and talking in, in a discussion. You can learn through that way. You can learn through observing things around you. So there's so many ways of learning. Just don't get caught up in the idea of go to school and that's it. Because then when you get out of school, then what? You just stop learning? You figure, well, that's the only way you're supposed to learn is just go to school. But then there's so many things going on around you that you can learn from and educate yourself even further. So, But to get back to that quote, the more you know, the more you will not go broke. So the more things you can learn, the more ways you have to make money and you can never go broke. Okay? It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So, and then, yeah, it's, it's self-explanatory. There should be no excuse for you not to make money in some way because even if it was a thing where you just learn how to um, wash a window, right? Then you just learn. Now you can go washing people's windows and make some money, Right? So it's always a way you can, something you can learn to make some money anywhere. It really shouldn't be any excuses at all. 
But a lot of times people make excuses. There's sometimes you even have you have certain knowledges you are things you already know and certain skills you develop and didn't think about, didn't realize you can turn that into an income. All right. So let's go on to the next one. All right. The next one is a slave who watches a master won't be a slave for long. A slave who watches a master won't be a slave for long. So, Jolene, do you want to comment on that? I may not like how it starts out a slave watching a master, even though I understand. A slave, what a slave who watches a master. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I said a slave, you know, watching the master. I may not like how it starts out being a slave. Um, but later that slave will up themselves, meaning if they watch the person doing what it takes to get ahead, they will no longer be a slave. It probably could have said maybe a person who watches, you know, a boss, a person who watches a millionaire, a person who watches a successful person, you know, won't, won't be, you know, unsuccessful or broke for long. But, um, once again... I agree with it. I just don't agree with the wordage. That's all. Other than that, yes, we must come up, all of us, because we've all been that person who wants more and needs more in life. Okay. Well, a slave who watches a master won't be a slave for long. Now, we could look at this in two different ways. You can look at it in the, in the sense of when slavery times were going on, if you bring yourself back to imagining back in the slavery times and plantation times, and you got slaves and they're constantly watching the master, what, what their master is doing, how their master is interacting with others, what are the master doing to get ahead. Um, maybe you're watching, at, on a, from a slave point of view, you're watching the master uh make guns so you start watching how the master is making guns and you say oh okay that's how you learn how to make guns so that's how you make guns so they may have to do it on the sly side but they start learning how to make guns to start teaching others right and then they can get themselves out of the slavery realm in modern times you can look at it in the same way but it wouldn't be as a literal slave like you in captivity. But again, like Jolene said, you can look at a boss. Um, the slave in this particular quote could represent maybe you're not financially astute and not financially financially savvy. So you start watching others that might, you know, you notice they're having... Uh, more financial success so you start to watch them and you start listening or then it goes back to learning stuff you if you could take the word slave and change the word slave to be you know you're at a certain income level and the master is uh, a millionaire billionaire so you might start watching videos of actual real millionaires that they some some of them do videos and they'll give away some tips about certain things on it might be time management how they manage their time and you might learn something from them and it brings you a little bit higher you start learning how to manage your time better because you got a tip from a millionaire they had decided to put it in the video or they decided to put it in the book so you won't be that slave for long they so they might tell you about how to make money online and so you start trying that and it brings your level of income up. So that's what that quote is saying. At least in our eyes, all right? So <clears throat> the next one, all right. Treat everyone like they are out to get you until they prove otherwise. Treat everyone like they are out to get you until they prove of otherwise. So what you think about it, Jolene? Ooh. Treat everyone like they are out to get you until they prove otherwise. Well, 
I'm not trying to act like Miss Religious. But treat everyone like they are out to get you. That's not even my personality. I, I wouldn't do, do that. So I don't agree with that unless you're in some type of other business. The businesses that... But it's not necessarily in a, a what you... If, it's not saying what if you agree with it or not. It's just well, that what do you, what do you was, think it means? I was getting there. I was getting there. So in my lines of work, I, I didn't ever have to treat everyone like they're out to get me. I'm a little vice... I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm gonna, going to treat everyone with kindness. So I'm going to treat you with kindness. I'm going to treat you with respect. I'm going to treat you with a level of respect, a high level of respect. I'm going to give you all that positive energy. But then if you cross the lines and I see that you can't be trusted and I, I can't talk to you, you know, like a normal human being, then I will have to like drop down and and just don't associate myself with you but I'm not starting out treat everyone like the, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm going to treat you with respect first then when I see you can't give it back then the lines are cut now you made it seem like that's just like a harsh thing like to treat everyone like nah I'm gonna treat everyone like they have to get me but can that be done in a nice kind of nice kind of fashion like you go out and you figure okay okay somebody you don't know you just might be meeting somebody so you're going to treat them like you're going to treat everybody like they're out to get you now the terms the may that might sound like a harsh way to do it but it can be done simply by saying okay if i'm going out i'm starting a new job i'm not gonna automatically start treating you and giving you all telling you all the stuff about me and um, giving you a bunch of information because I don't know you so I'm going to give you limited things about me I'm not going to tell you any too much about what I do in my after work time uh, I'm not going to tell you what I go what goes on in my off days because let's say I'm I'm I might be discussing something with another guy and I tell him something about my girlfriend. Oh, yes, he does this and that. Who's to say that that dude might not try to push up on my girlfriend? So I'm going to treat dude like he's out to get me. And those are one of the ways that you can be out to get somebody like, oh, what? His girlfriend does this or his wife does that. Well, I'm going to try to find my way to get in to get friendlier with him so I can get to her. So you're going to treat that person like they out to get you until they prove otherwise now this dude turns out to be a straight stand-up dude and he got a lot of respect and he's looking out for you and different things then now he's showing you he's proven the otherwise part of it he's showing you like oh, okay this is a dude that i can probably you know end up being real good friends with this dude or same thing with a female male female relationship you might be talking to a female at your job and you don't want to tell them too much or give them too much input about stuff because they might try to use that against you so and I can do that in a friendly way. Still have a friendly general relationship with the person. But then I'm not giving you too much because then that person can say, uh, you know, they can use some information and get back to your girl or your wife and flip something that wasn't that wasn't true but they're flipping it because they know hey his girl his wife gonna react like this because i know how women react this is what the woman would do and because that woman might want to be the one that gets with you so looking at that from that standpoint you're going to only be a certain you're going to only deal with people on a certain level until they prove otherwise they turn out to prove that oh this is a real cool person this is a real person that's gonna have that respect for you as opposed to just being super nice and being super respectful you're not being disrespectful but at the same time you're just being limited with certain things all right okay so let's get on to the next one this next one is kind of somewhat similar to a degree and i'll let you read that one you get what you put up with you get what you put up with oh yeah that is the 100 percent we allow the things that happen in our lives. We allow um, bad things, good things. We allow it to happen. Only we can stop it. 
if you want it to keep going and if it's not going so well and you don't step up to say anything it'll continue happening and that can be in jobs relationships now my girlfriends and I we talk about this all of the time because everybody goes through different relationships everybody wants that advice but I don't talk about my you know personal relationship job with everyone so you know I have a close circle you know that I will take advice from so you know we get what we put up with I agree with that 100% if you don't want to put up with it then stop it okay Yep. Um, let me see. You get what you put up with. Again, like like she said, you can. It could be at a job. It could be in a relationship. It, whether the relationship is a boy, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Um, it could be a woman and her, her homegirls, a fella and a dude and it's his homeboys with him, and they behave a certain way. If you continue this. Allowing it to happen, that's what you're going to keep getting. You put up with it, you're going to keep getting it. You might have some people that try to talk junk too much. And if you keep on <laughs> allowing them to you keep putting up with their junk talking, that's what you're going to continue to keep getting. If you, um, you might have some friends, close friends, a close little small circle, and things are going down or going wrong with them, and then you try to give them advice. But every time you give them advice, they always give you the same excuses every time. They come up with the same lame reasons why they can't do this, do that. If you keep putting up with it, every time they come to you for something, you already know the last five to ten times they came to you when you offered them the advice, they didn't take it. So you're going to keep on getting the same thing because you keep putting up with it. So at some point you got to make the decision to cut certain things off. You don't have to cut them off per se, but when it comes to giving advice, you might have to change that. You know, change them to have them ask somebody else about the advice and not come to you for any advice because you just know that hey, I done put up with this before, and so I'm not gonna put up with it anymore. Don't ask me. Ask such and such. Ask somebody else in our circle for advice because you can't take it from me. All right. So the next one we're gonna talk about. Uh, let me see. It says, and this one, I believe, a couple of times on a couple of occasions, because if some of you don't know, I like to read, uh, whether it's video, books, or whatever, interviews. I, I, I study Navy SEALs interviews. I study what uh, I've got some books that's written by them, and I really study. I like to study them because I like their mindset when it comes to accomplishing things. And they've been proven to get missions done. They accomplish it. And sometimes the dynamics change in the mission but or obstacles come in their way. But no matter what the obstacle is, they always seem to get that goal done or the mission done. So I study them to figure you know, to get that same mindset for even accomplishing my own personal goals or business goals and they don't have a give a give up attitude so I thought this was a cool quote right here or one of many cool quotes I done heard um, Navy SEALs or read Navy SEALs saying and this one is it says a man can only be beaten or you could put a man and woman but I just wrote down a man can only be beaten in two ways if he gives up or if he dies a man can only a man or woman can only be beaten in two ways. Two ways you can be beaten. If you give up, yeah, you lost, you get you just got beat. Or if you die, of course that's obvious. You can't you can no longer continue in that situation. But if you give up, there was a goal you wanted to go after and you give up on that. Then you just got beat. And you can apply that to um, other aspects. If it was a thing or a job you're supposed to do and you gave up on it, then you just got beaten. And the other one is just self-explanatory. If a person dies, you know, you of course you can't continue. And it's the same thing in war. There's been a lot of Navy SEALs that got pinned up in some situations, firefights, and because they had a never give up mentality and mentality, 
mentality and then they was they had enough creativity to start using their brain creatively to get themselves out of certain sticky situations instead of giving up they could have just gave up got shot died and been over with or gave up got captured and then that was it all right so what you think jolene a man um, or woman can only be beaten in two ways if he gives up or she gives up or if he or she dies. Or do you believe there's other ways you can be beaten? <laughs> Look at it from an aspect of... If, if anyone gives up, if you give up, you've given up. Life is hard. Life comes at you in so many different directions. You just never know what path a person is on. People give up for different reasons. Um, and if you're one of those people that have never, you know, gone through something, then it would be hard for you to understand this quote. But if you have gone through something traumatic, then I can see this quote. But you have to, for me, you have to have the faith in God. And as long as your faith is in God, I wholeheartedly believe that um, he gives you strength. Not Maybe not that same day, but he will give you the strength that you need to endure whatever you're going through. With that being said, try not to give up. But can it happen? Oh, yeah. That's what's wrong with all these people supposedly out here with this. I'm not giving everybody a pass, but this mental illness. Everybody wants to have mental illness. Not everybody has it. But I do believe some people suffer with it. That causes them to kind of give up. Because either they just can't get over the traumatic experience they've been in, or they will not allow God to work in their life. So if you allow God to work in your life, I do believe you can get up and persevere and get going again. It's not going to be overnight, but you can persevere. You can make it. You need that person in your ear to encourage you. If you don't have anybody in your ear to encourage you, get somebody. And then that person is going to have to be receptive. You can't be closed off. No, I want to hear it. No, you have to hear it. And you got to get up and got to keep moving. Alright, there it is. Okay, here's the next one. The discipline of writing something down is the first step towards making it happen. The discipline of writing something down is the first step towards making it happen. Now this quote came from Lee Iacocca who was, I guess he ended up being the CEO or exec, the top executive at one time of a Ford, uh, the Ford Motors and I got, I think I have a couple of books by him and uh, this is one of the quotes that was uh, I believe in the book is saying the discipline I think he was talking about accomplishing goals the discipline of writing something down is the first step towards making it happen now I don't even know if Lee Iacocca is still alive but if he is he's probably in his 80's or 90's now so and he was talking to, in one of the books he was talking about how he turned Ford back into a top you know vehicle again or vehicle company when it was down at one point. And so, what do you think about that quote? The discipline of writing something down, writing something down is the first step to making it happen. So do you think like writing goals down? Yes, that's... that's or do you think you just have the goal in your head? No. And you're gonna make it happen? No, learn by experience. You know, maybe when you're younger, you know, these little young kids graduating from high school, maybe, um, you know, if they're, if they're listening, um, maybe they feel like they don't have to because they're young, their minds are kind of different. When I was young, I'm going to be honest, I didn't write a lot of things down because I kept everything in my head. I kept everything in my head. The older I got now, I'm like, uh-uh, I need a pencil and a paper or my phone. I put everything in my phone. and um, so let me ask you this before you continue. Do you agree yes. that it's um necessary? It's better to write it down as yes. opposed to keeping it in your head. You need to write it down. I'm agreeing with that. Write it down. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Yes. Now would that now would that be, would that be 
with that guarantee that you will make those goals happen just by writing it down or do you think it requires a little bit more after you write it down yeah you need to go revisit it um technology is really really emerging so um with with a phone if you put it in your phone it will remind you versus that the pencil and paper is not going to remind you but the technology noises the updates they will remind you oh this is due Oh, I need to go back and do this. Oh, I need to go back and do this. If you put it in your phone. But pencil and paper, if you close it and put it down, you may not go revisit that pencil and paper as fast as you may go revisit your technology, technical device. So, yes, put it, put it somewhere where you can continuously go back. Make sure you're meeting your goals. I met with our church yesterday. We were writing some goals down, but we put everything in our phones. So we know, hey, August the 11th, oh, we're having a meeting that day. Oh, okay, well, I know I'll get a noise on that day instead of putting it on pencil and paper and then putting it on the couch somewhere and never going to see it again. So, yes, write it down so it can remind you, revisit, remind you, revisit. Yes, and then activate. Now, in regards to that, do you think, like, there's a certain energy that comes off, like, when you write something down on actual pen and paper, and we're, as opposed to putting it on a phone, a particular maybe a to-do list app, mm -hmm. as opposed to writing it on paper, is there? Do you feel like it's a certain energy, or you feel like you get a certain? Do you feel like you get more? Seem like you get more done when you write it down on actual pen and paper, as opposed to doing it on a app or some type of whatever you use to put it on your phone. Do you have you ever had an experience mm -hmm. where you wrote something down, a goal or something on paper? And then maybe another time you wrote it, you put it down, or even if it was a to-do list, some that things you had to do, you can use that in either one. Did you feel like one over the other? Like which one you felt like when I wrote it on paper, it seemed like I got more done, or if I wrote it on the phone, it seemed like I got more accomplished when I wrote it on the phone. I guess it depends on the person. So it's almost not to each his own, but kind of like to each his own. But if this is advice, yeah, you can probably be a little bit more thorough on paper. You could probably write out longer plans, longer goals, and then shorthand it on the device. Um, so, yes, they both have their pros and cons. I guess it just might depend on that individual. For me, I do both. I am a pencil person, but I will also close that book and will not go back and look at it. Whereas I can shorthand it on my device and it will pop up for me to do a reminder about what I had written down. So they go they go together, pencil and paper and technology device, they go together. It just depends on that that person, how disciplined you are. Okay. Well, let's go on to the next one. Okay. She's over here trying to rush some stuff. She's saying it's too long All discussion. Is, if we have 20 questions, you want to be respectful with people's time and break it up maybe in the three. Well, this this show is time. this show isn't a thing where we uh, cut it in times. What I could do, I can do. Normally, my shows end up being an hour long. Some some have been 50 minutes. Some has been 45 minutes. So that's less than an hour. Some have been longer than an hour. So it's just how the vibe is going and however long it takes. Now, I could cut them up in different pieces. I could take the whole hour. It can be an hour and 30 minutes and I could take, I can cut them up in pieces and post them up on social media later. That's a different thing. But we're going to keep this thing rolling. Like I said, if you got somewhere you got to go, just let me know. I don't have to go. But, um, I'm going to let you read this next one here. This is from John Johnson. Uh, John Johnson, y'all, if y'all familiar with him, he's he's been uh, passed away since. But he was um, the CEO of Ebony, I think, Jet. And maybe a couple of other things, I forget. But um, here's a quote that he, that he, actually I got it from a book about him. Uh, I think it was autobiography or biography. Dream. Smell dreams. Small dreams. Excuse me. Dreams, small dreams. If you make them too long, 
you get overwhelmed and you don't understand I'm sorry and you don't do anything if you make small goals and accomplish them it gives you the confidence to go on to higher goals so dream small dreams if you make them too long you get overwhelmed if you don't do anything if you make small goals and accomplish them, it gives you the confidence. All right. So what do you think about it? Anything too long is overwhelming. I believe that. So you do have to chop things up. That just answers the question. So. That's what you want to. <laughs> and that's all you want to say <laughs> no, about it. Cool. Kidding. It's all good. But. Um, we keep first it real here on this show. You have to have a goal. And that's where it goes, kind of goes back to the other question about writing things down. It's almost like making a calendar for your life. What are you doing in January? What are you doing in February? And you have to meet those goals, but you don't want to make them long because long things will overwhelm you. They will. So you do want to keep things small and simple. Life is almost kind of like simple, but you as a person can make it difficult and long and drawn out when it doesn't even have to be where are those shortcuts let me get to the shortcut how else can I get to this um, goal or this dream without doing all that long stuff so yes um, small is better attention spans you know you have a attention span not that long you know you want to stay small with with a big dream yes because we want success for everyone. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to read this again. Dream small dreams. If you make them too big, you get overwhelmed and you don't do anything. If you make small goals and accomplish them, it gives you the confidence to go on to higher goals. So apparently he mentioned goals in here. So this whole thing is about goals. So what I think he's saying is if you, um, because at first, when I first read this, I had an issue with it. Because it's like, man, it seemed like he's uh, wanting people to, to think small or something. Or don't want to accomplish much. But now I had to look at it a little bit more. And it kind of gives you that thing where, yeah, if you look at a, if you have a goal, a big goal you want to accomplish. Let's say the biggest goal in your life is like, man, you ain't never been a millionaire. So you want to be a millionaire. But if you focus more on just, man, that's a lot of money. If you never had that and that's all you focusing on, you're going to get so overwhelmed that you're not going to even, you ain't going to do anything because your focus is on, man, that's a big number. That's an overwhelming number. So you're not even going to take any steps. But if you break it down and say, okay, let me break that million down into months. How many months, you know, divide a million from 12. And then whatever that number is, that'll give you a little smaller focus so you can focus on that. And if you want to break that number down even further. Let, matter of fact, I'm going to do this real quick. Take this calendar here. I mean, not calendar, but calculator. And just get an, give an example here. So if I want to take a million. Right. And divide it from 12. You get 83,000 roughly. All right. So that's a little bit better number you can focus on and won't feel too overwhelmed. But you could feel feel overwhelmed from that. Right. So I'm going to take that eighty three thousand and break that down. Um, let me see. That's eighty three thousand a month. Break it into four weeks. Divide that by four. So now that's twenty thousand a week. So now if you can make twenty thousand a week. That'll give you eighty thousand a month, and then that eighty thousand a month for twelve months will bring you a million. So that number, you're breaking the number down even further, and now you can kind of focus on the twenty thousand because just like that million, man, that's overwhelming, and so that might stop you from doing anything. But if you break the numbers down a little bit further, then it'll give you something to work with, and you can kind of do small pieces. Now that's uh, let me see, that's twenty thousand. A week, right? So I'm gonna divide that into seven for seven days, right? And now you get uh, roughly about three thousand. So you can make three thousand dollars a day, right? 
let's just say hypothetically that's a better number you can wrap around your brain and so now you can focus on that number instead of focusing on the million because when you focused on the million it was like man i don't know and then it stops you in your tracks from even trying to make a million but if you break it all the way down to three thousand a day and you can make three thousand now that three thousand is a, a, a better number you can focus on now you can start Going towards your goal of a million because you're focusing on every day make a three make three thousand a day make three thousand a day, and then by the end of the month it's going to be um, eighty if I'm not mistaken eighty thousand or twenty thousand, and then that twenty thousand for the year, or uh, I may have messed the numbers up, but you get the point. In a year's time, you can make that million. So. That's what I think he was saying when he broke that down. If you break it down to small goals and, and when you accomplish them, then you start having the confidence. See, I forgot that part. When you start making small accomplishments, you'll get that confidence and you'll be like, oh, man, now I can tackle something bigger. And then you accomplish that and you can go bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So that's pretty much on that one. Now, I'm going to read this other one. This one is a um, Malcolm X quote. All right. And I thought it was pretty interesting. It says, don't be in a hurry to condemn because he or she doesn't do what you do or as fast. There was a time when you didn't know what you know today. All right. Malcolm X quote. I'm going to read it again. Don't be in a hurry to condemn because he or she doesn't do what you do or as fast. So just to break that down real quick. Don't condemn somebody because he or she doesn't do something. Do what you do. Or maybe they don't do it as fast as you do it. All right. Because there was a time when you didn't know what you know today. So you might have a lot of knowledge about things. But at one time you didn't know at one point. But now you know. And then the person that you're dealing with doesn't know these things. So they're doing things in a, a manner that's probably slower. Or they don't do it how you know how to do it. And you know the way that you know how to do it is going to bring you, bring that person results. You know this because now you obtain that information. And so being that you know this, you're trying to tell them, but they don't want to do it like you do it. And they can't do it as fast, so it kind of bothers you because you know if you give them that information, you know they do it this way, they're going to get the results faster than they've been getting it. But sometimes they... they um, they just don't know it or just don't want to realize it or just haven't come to that realization yet. And so you got to keep that in mind that sometimes you know things that others don't. And you see them moving in a certain way you're like, man, I wish they would just do it like this. They'll get better results. But you shouldn't condemn them for it because there was a time when, again, you didn't know stuff. Right. And there was somebody in a position where you're at. That they knew some stuff. Maybe they tried to tell you. Or maybe they didn't say nothing at all. But you always watch them and like man how did they. How did this happen for them so quick. Or how do they know this. How do they know about that. I didn't even know about that. And so I think that was a cool uh, Malcolm X quote. A lot of people might hate on Malcolm X. But he has some very profound quotes. That I think anybody can apply. Or should apply anyway. So what do you think about that quote. You explained it. Pretty much um, kind of reminds me of a Bible verse. That was the first thing that I could <laughs> say. You know, you just don't want to make people feel bad. You know, you just it's just patience. You know, just take your time with people. And um, either they come around and if they don't come around, still don't condemn them. Just uh, be patient with them. So this this quote just teaches you about patience. And if you're in a hurry, then you check yourself. So it's just patience teaching you about patience. Pretty cool. Oh, okay. Well, here's another quote. Now, this quote, uh, let me see. It's a, it's a slightly different. I actually wrote this down. I got it from a calendar book. They was At my job, they was giving out some calendar books. And I happened to see this quote in there. I don't think it was a name behind the quote. I think it had unknown next to it. But I kind of turned it, changed it just a little bit. But it's not too far off from what it said in this calendar book. And it said... Um, as I grow, I think the other, I think the original quote said, as I grow older, but I changed it to wiser. So as I grow wiser, I pay less attention to what men or women say. I just watch what they do. 
All right. As I grow wiser, or you can say as you get older, you can change it to that. As I get older, I pay less attention to what men or women say. I just watch what they do. So I, it's not that I won't pay no attention. I just pay. I listen what they saying, but I'm going to watch what their actions is as well. So I'll let you go on this one first before I comment it because I have something in mind. Um, it just takes you back to what your parents or old people say in, in general. Actions speak louder than words. So people do tend to do talk a whole lot. And it's just blah, 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 blah. And then when you get older, you don't want to hear all that. You don't want to hear it. It's just show me. And I'll sit back. And if I see you doing something without all that talking, that's what wakens you. Not all the talking and the talking and the talking. Some people just talk too much. So it's all about actions. I guess when you either mature, get older, however you put it, we just need to see some action. Okay. Well, things came to my mind, a couple of things. The RBG code, if y'all don't know what that is, um, you might want to Google that. Um, also, there's a book called How to Hustle and Win. The, the RBG code is in that book too and um, the thing that from that code was showing and proving that was one thing that came to mind when I read this particular quote that I just read showing and proving you know more or less like Jolene said about your actions let your actions show people improve and another thing came to mind is um when I watch some of these uh, videos from some guys that are I guess consider either consider themselves or people consider them from the conscious community, and they they seem to do a lot of um, a lot of talking. And I'm not gonna say anybody's names. If any person feels like that's them, you know that's that's how you feel. I didn't say your name, and if you want to discuss it with me, we can do that too. But um, I just noticed some people would go around and just like I noticed some debates. Some people want to do a lot of debates. And is that really doing something for the community or is that just a lot of talking and I can show you how great a debater I am. And But is that really doing something for your community? So it's like you're doing a lot of talking and so I pay less attention to that and I just watch what you do. So you might do want to do all these debates and I don't debate against this group and I don't debate against this person from this race or that person from that race. But then after the debate's over, then what's your actions behind it? And the same thing with people in the community. You might have be have some local people in your community. They do a lot of talk and get on the news or rant and rave on Facebook and say this and that about Republicans or Democrats. But then when you're watching their actual movements, have anything they done improved their neighborhood, their city as a whole, or the state or the country? What are the actions saying? So that's what, uh, that was a cool quote too. I like to kind of, I use, I kind of pay attention to that a lot. I watch, I listen to what people are saying, but then I'm looking at, okay, what's your actions behind that? Let's see if it matching up. And I could say another thing in regards to that. A lot of people might be saying they're entrepreneurs or they want to be entrepreneurs. So they do a lot of talking about it. But then I got to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to be paying attention to them. They say they're an entrepreneur. Do they have a website that's suggesting such? They got something they're selling? Or do they have a service they're providing? That'll tell me if what they're saying is really true. Are they, and don't have to necessarily be selling anything, but are they even creating a site? Do they have somewhere where they can sell? Because that's showing, the actions is showing that okay, yeah, they're going in that direction. As opposed to just saying this and saying that. But they don't have a website up. They ain't have a, um they're not posting anything on their Facebook page that suggests they got a service or a product they're selling. So you can kind of that's a really cool thing to uh look at. So we're gonna look at another Malcolm X quote. And this is pretty been a pretty uh popular one throughout the years. And this one says, A man who stands for nothing will fall for anything a man or I'll add in there a man or woman who stands for nothing will fall for anything Malcolm X quote 
So what do you think? It kind of goes back to um, your education level. That's, that's what, what this quote brings me to. But yes, I do agree. And if a man or a woman absolutely stand for nothing, then that, to me, that must mean something has happened early in their life as far as education is concerned. Meaning, um, you didn't take life serious, you dropped out, you're disrespectful to your parents, you're disrespectful to authority, you're disrespectful to you know your community leaders, your church pastors. So if you just absolutely have this attitude, if you just absolutely stand for nothing, like absolutely stand for nothing, then you will. You will fall. Forget about anything. You will, you will fall if you have this type of attitude. If you just stand for absolutely nothing nothing that means to me you're like almost hazardous to society you're 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 dangerous you know so you don't care and you know i can say this cuz i've seen you know our youth you know i've been you know children have tried to fight me children have cussed me out and don't call parents because they don't care you know you can look at the news um daily and just kind of see you know who's caring who's not who cares and who doesn't so, I don't even have to finish the rest of the quote. You will fall with a bad attitude. Alright. So, when I think about this quote, a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. Or a woman. What comes to mind is the uh, football players who they tell nowadays, I don't know, I don't know what the situation is with the, uh, the NFL, but they won't stand up against something like taking a knee for the flag, which is all has something to do with, which the original thing has something to do with the brutality towards black people or black males being shot, um, you know, unarmed, and the constant, constant thing going, continuing. And so some football players wanted to take a stand for that, but they didn't take a stand for it. And every time the owners or somebody comes with a new ruling, they fall for the new rule. Well, if you do this, then this is going to happen to you. So they all start bowing down. All right. Or even the school, there was a situation where I think some college students had um, decided they wasn't going to play a game. I don't know if it was football or basketball. I forget. That was pretty recent, maybe within the year or so. They took a stand over some... Uh, prejudice things that was going on towards them so they decided they wasn't going to play a game or two and they they took a stand on that and then I think some things started changing so and then, it's, and then this can also apply for you as you know as far as your jobs concerned if you let if you fall very little game that uh, your boss or your super your immediate supervisor is telling you and you know something ain't right and you don't stand up for it they can just keep on pulling the same okie doke on you constantly, day in, day out. And you're just going to be messed up and in the same position. Alright, so that's that one. Now here's one from, here's a quote from Jake Simmons Jr. A lot of people don't know who Jake Simmons Jr. is. This was a black man who I think he owned oil or oil refinery. A lot of people don't know that black people own some oil refineries. But this is Jake Simmons Jr. He was one of those black men who um, had control of oil at one point. Which is very valuable today still to this day. And his quote was, you are equal to anyone. But if you think you are, but if you think that you are not, you're not. You are equal to anyone, but if you think that you're not, you're not. So, what do you think about that quote from Jake Simmons Jr.? Well, this is what we have to um, we have to give ourselves um, high self esteem, self confidence. So we have to feed our children. You know, we have to feed our families. We have to feed our communities because we do have a lot of um, low self-esteem people. And that goes back to the other quote we were just um, 
talking about. Um, so, of course, you tell your children. My son goes to a predominantly white school. You know, I went to his eighth grade promotion in May. And, you know, you have... You have your black children there, but it's a predominantly white and Asian school. So when they were giving out awards, you know, my, my son didn't do bad last year, but his honor roll was not as high as the other kids. So it's a predominantly um, all, all white kids and Asian kids getting the highest math award, the highest this award. But, you know, you might have, you know, your... Latino kid or your African American child, they might get um, who's most improved, you know, something like that. So even with that being said, I, I make sure I tell my son as often as I can, you are a wonderful black male child. I love you. I love what you do. Wow, you did this. I just make a long story short, I just make sure I encourage him as well as other children that I come in contact with because they don't hear it. They don't get it. So you need to tell your children, your community, your family members that they're great. They'll do, look in that mirror and you tell yourself. I look in the mirror and I tell myself, you know, Jolene, you're, you're a great woman. Wonderful woman. You know, so um, God made us. Why shouldn't we be all that? We are all that and then some. So encourage your community <coughs> and family. All right, cool. So we're going to go on to the next one. Now, this one, again, I kind of like the quote, that, the original quote, but I wanted to put it in terms of, uh, how would I say, the difference between men and boys. But this was the quote that, um, for those, like, who y'all know Puff Daddy or Diddy or P. Diddy, he always used to say, bad boys move in silence bad boys move in silence but this quote I kind of reworded it and I put real men move in silence um, I didn't like the bad boys thing particularly the boys part because a, a boy and a man is just two different things and a boy a real boy and a real man is going to move two different ways that was one part of it and then the bad boys that was just more like a Eh, we don't need all that to show that you bad or tough, so scratch that out. So I looked at it as just real men move in silence. Real men move in silence. So what you think about what this quote is saying? How do you feel about the quote? What do you think about the quote? That, that goes back to one of the quotes we were talking about earlier. It's all about actions speak louder than words. You know, um... Everybody wants to showboat and once again just do a lot of talking, 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 talking. But until you shut your mouth and actually do something, put your plan together and make it work, it's just like blah, 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 blah. So yes, shut your mouth, do what you're going to do for your community or your family, and let us watch. Oh, they didn't do a lot of, you know, Facebook posting and Instagram bragging. They're really out there doing it. Oh, okay, I, let me see what you did so I can do it as well. All right. All right, I can go with that. Um, yeah, pretty much. Just real men move in silence. I don't always have to tell you my next move. I just do it, and you'll see it. Now, some people might get upset, or they know the person is up to something, and they just want to have. They just have to know. But sometimes it's just better to just go on and move, make your move, and that's whether that's whether it's something personal in your business life or whatever. Like, I'm not going to, if I have a certain course that I want to create, I'm not going to even always tell anybody. It just depends on what my goals are or what I'm trying to do. If I want to promote it early before I make it or I might start on it, then that's a, that's one thing. If it's just for a promotion standpoint and trying to gain customers, that's one thing. But most times, if I have a course I'm going to create or there's a particular uh, book I'm going to write, ebook I'm just going to go on and write it be finished with it and then next thing you know you find out oh he wrote another book so I'm moving in silence and sometimes silence is a very good tactic and a good strategy because nobody knows what you're doing nobody knows when you're coming 
Nobody knows how you're going to approach certain things, so sometimes it's good to just move silently. All right, that's that's a strategy. All right, so here's the next one. And this was, I don't know if it's a direct quote. I might have changed the words again a little bit. And it was from a book that, um, I don't know if Master P wrote it, but it was a book about goals. I got that. I still got that book on my shelf somewhere. But um, I think it was something that maybe he said that his grandfather told him or somebody told him. And I forgot the actual quote. So this is either the actual one he said his grandfather told him or there was some slight variation of it. And this one says, a true warrior always prepares for war in times of peace. A true warrior always prepares for war in times of peace. So what do you think about that quote? A true warrior always prepares for war in times of peace. Or I can add, a true warrior always prepares for war, prepares for war, but in times of peace. So I add the word but. Well, preparing for anything is good. So a true warrior prepares, which is, I mean, it's almost self-explanatory as well. So a true warrior always prepares for war in the time of peace. So you just want to make sure things are prepared. You want to make sure you have food, your family's safe, um, you have money coming in. Um, even though times, I guess, if they get rough, just make sure we have an alternative situation to go through. In times of peace, things can be at a peaceful time, but you still want to make sure you're still preparing. Because at any time, which what kind of happened to me this year, not that I lost my job, but my pay decreased. So due to my pay decreasing, um, due to um, a teacher test they wanted me to take. So due to my pay decreasing, I had to make sure I was still bringing in funds. Um, I had to prepare. So I was preparing for times such as this year. So I've been preparing for the past 18 years for a time for this, for this one year that kind of set me back some. So I had to prepare. And so I'm going to start preparing again with another job, you know. So it's always good to prepare because you just never know. You just never know. So now I want you to read this one here. Now, before you read it, this quote is from DMX. Y'all already know the rapper DMX. Again, there's another book I have, and it was um, about DMX. Now, I don't know if he wrote it himself or somebody wrote it about him, but this was one of the things he said in, uh, that was said he said in the book. Don't have an assumption of who I am until you've met me. All right, so what do you think? Uh, that kind of goes back up to one of those quotes we were talking about, um, which I agree. But we do this. Our, I don't know about other cultures. I can't speak for other cultures. But I know with um, the African-American culture, I don't know about the dudes, but women, oh, my goodness. Now I guess it's called sizing you up. So a woman will size you up when you enter the room baby they have already spotted you when you were in the car getting out of the car so yes women will size you up based on your hair based on your body based on your clothes and it's sad we're like this so I know there have been a lot of challenges going on on Facebook and Instagram for black women to uh you know encourage the next 25 girls that they're beautiful, they're this, they're that, they're this. It's just sad that we have to, um, I don't know if it's in these songs that's making us do this. I don't know where we get this, um, not that, well, I guess that I'm better than you. I don't know where we get this from, but, um, yes. So don't judge a book by its cover. So, you know, wait until you get to meet me. And then, you know, make your judgments. So, yeah. Alright, well, I want you to read oh, okay. this next one here. Let me get this real quick. Before you read it, um, this is from one of the boxers, one of the boxing greats, Bernard Hopkins. Alright? And I thought it was an interesting quote as well. And um, I'm going to let Jolene read this one. I fear no man on this earth who breathes the same air as I do. So what do you think? think about it. 100 you know we we come we come from God you know 
he's given us the same it just depends on what you do with it so we shouldn't be afraid of anyone he didn't give us a spirit of fear we're breathing the same air we we shouldn't be afraid of each other we shouldn't be there should be no fear but is there fear sure but it shouldn't be people aren't equipped with that once again going back to one of those other quotes you have to encourage people what you're just as good as the next person you're just as you're doing great as the next person but our people don't get this so there's some type of fear the devil that's what it is the devil the devil is smiling all right well there you have it on that um i fear no man on this earth who breathes the same air as i do so i'm gonna look at it from since this is a boxer one of the great boxers of our era of our time you can look at it in two ways i guess maybe probably can look at it in a bunch of ways but one if you look at it from the standpoint of boxing he was letting people know hey look I can get in the ring, so I don't fear no man on this earth who breathes the same air as I do. I can get in this ring. I ain't afraid of you when I'm in this boxing ring. You might, get to, you may be able to take me out, but I'm not afraid of you, so I could take you. I'm, I feel like I could take you out. So you look at it from that standpoint. You can look at it from a standpoint of just your life. You're gonna tackle things in life and have no fear about it. You're not, not gonna let anybody else put you in any type of fear. And same thing if you're like a kid growing up in school, you don't have to fear anybody because you all breathe the same air. So you can do the same things. You can make the same accomplishments, so to speak, and continue to move on with your life. You don't have to live in that fear. All right. So the next one is from the book How to Hustle and Win. Like I was telling you about earlier, this book that has the uh, RBG code in it. And um, maybe one day I'll read that code because I, I kind of, and I tweaked some things. I took some words out of the RBG code, but I actually like that particular code. I kind of try to use that as a, um, a template, you know, how I, how I move and do things. All right. But this quote, it says, I think, therefore, I'm dangerous. I think, or you can say, I use my mind, therefore, that makes me dangerous. I think, therefore, I'm dangerous. So, what you think? Yeah. Um, I've heard this in two ways. I've heard an idle mind is dangerous, and now I'm hearing if you think you're dangerous. Idle mind means you don't have anything to do, so you're going to get into some trouble because your mind is not doing anything but getting in trouble. But when you're thinking, you're thinking of ways um, to solve problems problems such as the problems we have in this world so when you try to solve problems that we have in this world you look at as being dangerous because people don't want those problems solved so I agree alright cool we're going to go on to the next one uh, I'm going to let you read this next one tough times don't laugh last I'm sorry tough times don't laugh but tough people do Mm. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Tough people last. You can even add it like that. Tough times don't last, but tough people last. I might have to disagree with this one. Okay, so the tough times will last more than the tough than the tougher person. No, I'm not saying that. So what you said. So I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier. But it, it only takes a person to understand maybe where I'm coming from if you've gone through something traumatic traumatic situations do last but when you've gone through a traumatic situation it does make that person more tough so they do last a tough time does last and it makes or breaks that person therefore tough times do last depending on you know the situation your maturity level but it will toughen that person so yes I just kind of disagree with the first part. That's all. Okay. Well, in regards to that, um, tough times don't last. I'll give you an example without giving you all too much detail. It's a job I work. Actually, I still work to this day, but maybe several years, probably seven to ten years back. 
it was a situation I had with a uh, a beef with a, a supervisor of mine. I shouldn't say of mine, but a supervisor. He was my supervisor at the time. And um, it ended up turning into us going to a hearing. So this thing kind of lasted for a few months. So the first part of this quote, tough times don't last. So I had to go through this whole thing. I had to go through a hearing because I felt that he was out of place and out of hand. And then he was, he was, trying, he was trying to use some stuff against me. And, um, which didn't turn out well for him, actually, in the beginning. They tried to say some things I didn't do, and, and at first I was letting people know, like, yo, this guy, if he, you know, he got something to say, he need to come in my face and say it, he's out of place, blah, 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 blah. And so, what he tried to do is try to pull up some information and try to say I didn't do what what I was supposed to do and then when me and him personally had a meeting he tried to pull these tactics but I called every tactic out that he was trying to pull on me see he didn't he didn't either he didn't realize or he thought I just wouldn't pay attention to we both apparently went to the same um classes or whatever you want to say maybe him at a different era of time and then me later to be trained in a certain um learning how to do a certain thing so when he was probably trying to pull it back up on me i called him out of every little thing he was doing and then i threw something back at him that made him so enraged and i just stood there and smiled because i got the best of him and so what he tried to do is take some information and try to uh I had to go to a hearing and we had to deal with a, a higher person than both of us. And um, so that was the tough times because what ended up happening is I had to get suspended for a couple of weeks. Where normally the stuff that he was trying to say I was doing, people either get fired or they get suspended for like a month or two. So I, for one, I beat that rap as far as the length of time. And then... The first hearing, I actually beat the hearing. So what they had to what they had to do is cancel that hearing. So I actually, I actually beat the the hearing the first time. It's nothing to do with going to jail or nothing, or court or nothing like that. It has something to do with a job. And so I actually beat the hearing the first time. So now I know, man. They had now they're thinking about some other things. They had to find out another way to get me, or this particular supervisor had to find another way to get me. So when they come back. They had to come up with something which still didn't make sense, but they used some little small technicalities, which was which was stupid. But in order to get me because they got because he got beat the first time and then I got him when me, me and him had the personal one on one. So I beat him twice. So they had to find some way to get me. And so they came up with some little nonsense garbage. And so I ended up having to get. Uh, two week suspension so that was a tough time but because I was a tough that was a tough time and it didn't last all right it lasts for a few months or whatever and then the t couple of weeks that added with the few months that I had to um, be without uh, actually without pay so that was a little tough time for me but that tough time didn't last because I'm me being a tough person, I still lasted longer than that tough time. And so here I here I am. I go back to the job. I'm still at the job, not fired or whatever. So that tough time didn't last, but the tough people, me, person, or you, whoever, lasted outlasted that tough little time. So then when I look at that quote, that's an example I can give y'all. All right. So we got about. Three more quotes to go, and we're going to get up out of here. Now, here's one. Um, I think this one was from uh, Martin Luther King, matter of fact. And this one is pretty profound. And you can look at the happenings and the goings on today in regards to this one. I can't remember how far back he said this quote, but you can take this quote he done said years ago and still look at today. All right. Because this is really going on today. And it says, once you accept injustice, you become unjust. Once you accept injustice, 
you become unjust. So there's a lot of injustices going on, whether it's at your job, whether it's going on in the public, outside in society, period. Once you keep on accepting injustice being done to you or others, then you yourself become unjust. So what you think about that quote? Yeah, it's just almost like you're giving up. That goes back up to, um, yeah, you're just, you're, you, you are accepting. Um, so, yeah. Um, once you've accepted injustice, you know, and that ha that happens when you don't know law, when you don't know rules, when you don't know your rights, you kind of accept, um, you just kind of, when you just accept it, like, um, you know, I see it happen in our, in our community daily with our children being taught all of the time it just irks me so bad parents don't know their school rights you know I don't even know a lot of my rights you know so if um, a lawyer or a cop or somebody were to say something to me and you know I didn't know not that I would accept it but some people would just go on and be like okay I just don't know so I we need to educate ourselves on, on laws, on um, the Bill of Rights, you know, Trump is around here saying, you know, s so many things that, you know, we should be able to fight him on, but we can't fight him because I guess he has supposedly so much money, I guess, but that fool gets on my nerves, but um, we do, we accept things because we don't know, so we lack knowledge in areas where we should be more educated in. And that's how they get over on us. All right, so we're going to go to the next one. You're going to read this next one here. This is from um, Y'all Should Know Dick Gregory. That's the dude right there. This All is right. the last one. This is not the last one. It's okay. next to the last next one. Next to the last one. So here you go. Fear and God don't occupy the same space. Fear and God don't occupy the same space. Fear and God don't occupy the same space. So what you think? I agree. God does not give us the spirit of fear. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Well, we're just going to leave that at that. <laughs> it looks like she might have some things to do. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. It's self-explanatory. Look, fear and God don't occupy the same space. God is telling you, baby, I don't give you the spirit of fear. We're done. Okay. Do you agree? Well, what do you think? Do you feel like they do? do of what do course you not. I don't oh, feel okay. like God and fear yes. or fear and God don't yes. occupy the same space. The Lord is the bomb. That's right. They do not occupy the same space. We don't have time for fear. But the question is, do we have it and why? There are a lot of people who yes. have fears about yes. stuff. I was afraid and to don't step want, out. And don't want to move away from fear. I was afraid to step out. I'm try we're trying to Some people to make excuses to, to continue to right. stay, in, so they stay fearful. So if we're God, we shouldn't have any fear. It's time we get up and move. Some people stay stay fearful. They stay fearful, but if they don't Some occupy the same space and he is our Lord and Savior, then we should be moving. Some people want to we continue to being victims, living in victim mode. Shoot. And here's the last quote here from Martin Luther King again. Don King. And I like this one, too, because there's another one that kind of deals. There's a lot of that going on today, too. My daddy used to hang out with King. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to say that. And this one says, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. That's, that's real deep. There comes a time when silence is betrayal. And I'll say it a little bit different to kind of spark some people's thoughts. There comes a time when being quiet. You are actually betraying somebody. All right. I agree. So there should be things that you should actually speak up on and you just being quiet about it. You don't betray the whole group of people or you betray a, a situation just by being quiet. Things are going on in your school. You might be working at a school and you know the programs they teaching kids is not working ain't on the up and up and you just stay silent about it you'd have betrayed all them kids when you know there's a better way of doing it you might even have a way of doing it or there might be an uh, older way that was working before and that might be the way to go 
but because somebody came up with this new system or new program to teach the kids how to read or do math or whatever subject it is but it's obviously it's not working but you're going to remain silent about it you betraying them kids from even getting better in their lives or you know you're working somewhere and a boss done something wrong to somebody else and you're going to be silent about it they blatantly was wrong that was betrayal you betrayed somebody so what you think about this last quote here of course we're silent um i've been guilty probably a lot of us have been guilty because when we try to stand up things happen you lose your job but then you think back oh my gosh i gotta take care of my family but of course we're silent we're we're silent for different reasons we're silent to protect our families but let me let me go ahead ask you something get on in there in regards to that get on in there now you saying okay it's cool it's under, it's all understandable and it's it's real hard to to juggle that do i stay and be quiet even if it was, even if uh, something towards you is being done but you're going to be silent and then you betraying yourself but then do you and that, again that's a hard balance to work with that hey i'm gonna lose my job i can't take care of my family but i need to stand up now what happens when, let's say you have grandkids and then your grandkids find out something might have been a major thing or something small and they look back and all they have is a legacy of, well, my grandma, my grandpa, they didn't stand up. They kept quiet. Just like look at the civil rights movement, a lot of them, you got like John Lewis, there's still some people alive from that era. They thought by being quiet and getting beat down and getting hosed and getting dog bit instead of fighting and protecting themselves they think that that's a great thing in civil rights history is it, it was so it was such a good thing to to be quiet and they talked to john lewis and a few others have talked about this civil rights era like that's something to be proud of to get your face bashed in for standing up so they kept silent but betrayed now they betrayed generations after them for being quiet because now you're going to have people or governments looking at them like well since y'all in the civil rights era was doing that well we're going to be take we're going to treat this younger generation like that because y'all don't know how to stand up y'all wouldn't stand up or same thing in in your family like you might have an argument with a next door neighbor about something or you seen something go down and you just be silent about it but betray your kids in the process so there's a balance between and like I said, I'm not saying one way is right or wrong. It's just that the thought of even if your your son or daughter they find they watch you and say, "Man, look at her, look at my mom and dad being silent," but it's betraying us. I would rather I'd be proud to know that they stood up and and protected themselves or stood up for themselves as opposed to bowing down. Because then you pass off that bowing down energy to your children. It goes on to your grandchildren. Or the possibility of all that happening. So what do you think about that? This quote again? Yeah, in regards to what I just said. This yeah. is about being silent and betraying and the job. And you got to have work a job. And, but then your grandkids might find out, oh, my grandma and grand, granddad, they ain't, know, they ain't stand up for themselves. Well, then that's, you know, that's the saying now. You're, you're in your feelings. You know, you're, you're in your feelings. You don't want to say anything. Or you're in your feelings. And then you're going to stand up and you're going to be the, the next Malcolm X. But, but the whole thing is you have to make good judgments. Yes, things. Um, when you're silent. Well, really, there are laws, too, that you can't be silent on some things. You have to tell or you can be held accountable. And then there are some things where, yes, we do sit back and we're quiet. Um, you just have to be in judgment of the situation. I think we all are guilty to that. But as you raise your next generation, if you want to put a little bit more fire under them, like how my parents raised me, my parents raised me, um, not to be quiet. My dad was more of a firecracker. So he was more like, you know, not necessarily speak up, but kind of speak up, but just be civil. My mother was like, shh. But they grew up in different times. My father and mother were, are, are, were 80. 
So when they grew up, they had to be quiet. On their birth certificates, it read Negro boy, Negro girl. So they, they were quiet in a lot of their situations. And so it just depends on what generation you're in. So that's why they told me to be quiet. But I'm in a different generation. I have a 14-year-old. And you have two 20, mid-20-year-olds. 20 you have taught them and... I have taught him, we kind of teach them to be a little bit more verbal. Have they? Yes, I can say, you know, with one, with one, both of them seem, your daughters seem to be, to me, to take on the perspective of kind of speaking up. With my son, I do believe he speaks up as much as he can. He's at a different age level, so he still wants to be respectful and not disrespectful so yes it just depends on the generation we're in a whole new generation now when they have kids who knows because we're leaving our legacies behind all right now you mentioned something about your parents were in a different era mm -hmm. but we don't even go further back than your parents i was saying how they before told your, me to be quiet before they were even Thought, born or even thought of. We're talking about the 1800s. And what I'm talking about is, um, in particular, the Haitian Revolution. There was people that had to stand up and not be silent. So, is it a thing where, because some, some, I guess sometimes, that's probably embedded in a lot of us, but as far as standing up for ourselves and not being silent, but for some reason, certain situations and circumstances then got to certain people where it has made them, forced them to be quiet, and then they pass that that energy off to their um, offspring, and then that gets passed off to the next, depending on if their offspring continues that same mindset. So what do you say about those who even further back then... Oh, you better be quiet. Was, was, I'm talking about in the 1800s, there's people yeah. that stood up yeah, and actually fought. And died. Some died, some didn't. But the outcome turned out that they would not be slaves. And so you have, you have a group of people in the Western Hemisphere that because of their standing up and not staying silent and betraying the rest of their group, now they, they were the only people that we could all say now there were a set of black people that stood up for themselves. Haitian Revolution. That came, that didn't stay silent. Yeah. But this is way before I mean, your I'm, parents I mean, were even born. I'm just saying, which is good. So your, you, so what you, I'm saying you determine is, your outcome. What I'm asking is, is there's just a thing that being, standing up and speaking up for yourself is already in us, but then circumstances force some of us to not be, you know, be still be that way? Or is that really just some part of some people's makeup? It could be a little bit of both. It could be a little bit of both. It could be a little bit of both. The, 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 the situation will determine how much you say. It depends on the situation. So. Oh, okay, well. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! There you have it. Um, some incredible quotes. And um, before we get out of here, uh, you got any last words, Jolene? And also give out your, um, your social media if, if you want to. And so people know how to get in contact with you. Y'all, I'm new to this. If you contact me, Jolene Harper, J-O-L-A-Y-N-E, Harper, H-A-R-P-E-R. -E That's my Facebook name. That's what I'm normally on. Um, my Instagram is Jolene Harper 56. Um, so, yeah, J O L A Y N E H A R P E R 56. That's it. That's, that's, that's the only thing <laughs> I'm attached to, associated with. All right, folks, there you have it. On behalf of HowToUniversity.thinkific.com, I'm Damani Norwood, aka The Real Deal. And um, you guys can catch me on Norwood Ventures on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Twitter. For those of you who want to learn, um, who are into the self-protection, self-defense, you can catch me on Survive and Protect on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Check out How to University on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram as well. And with that being said, we're gone. Peace. Adios, mi amores.